We will talk about the top 7 causes of chronic low-grade fever. Low-grade fever affects almost 10% of the population at some point in their life. It is more common in younger women and most likely it's due to stress while in older people it is more common due to chronic infections or undiagnosed cancers. When we say low-grade fever, we mean when body temperature is more than 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit and less than 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. It is more than 37 degrees Celsius and less than 38 degrees Celsius. The first most common cause of low-grade fever is infections, accounting for almost 40% of cases. And the most common such infection is tuberculosis. It is an infection caused by the bacteria Mycobacterium tuberculosis, which causes chronic inflammation. It causes a low-grade fever, which worsens in the evening or night. Night sweats, weight loss, and fatigue. Sometimes cough and swollen lymph nodes occur. Tuberculosis is more common in older adults due to activation of latent forms and is slightly more common in men. Gold standard of diagnosis of tuberculosis is positive bacterial culture in the sputum. Other tests are positive tuberculin skin test and chest x-ray. Treatment is with antibiotics over six months. Combination of antibiotics are used like isoniazid, rifampin, and ethambutol. Prognosis is good if treated properly. Another commonly diagnosed infection is infectious mononucleosis, which is caused by Epstein-Barr virus. It infects immune B cells and causes chronic inflammatory reaction. It causes persistent low-grade fever, fatigue, sore throat, and swollen tonsils, also swollen lymph nodes, especially in the neck. And large spleen, also common, which is called splenomegaly. Infectious mononucleosis is more common in young people under the age of 25. The gold standard of diagnosis is detecting heterophile antibodies via monospot test, specific serologic test for Epstein-Barr virus. The treatment is supportive care like rest, hydration and analgesics. The white contact sports if splenomegaly is present. Prognosis is excellent in most cases, fully recovered within few months. The second most common cause of low-grade fever is autoimmune diseases, responsible around 25% of cases. Of the most common autoimmune disease in this case is systemic lupus erythematos. It is a disease when our immune system mistakenly attacks healthy tissues and causes inflammatory reaction and tissue damage. Its most common symptoms are low-grade fever with migratory joint pain or arthritis means affects different joints. The fly rush on the face, fatigue and photosensitivity, also hair loss. For diagnosis, anti-nuclear antibodies tests and anti-DINA tests are used, also anti-Smith antibodies. Systemic lupus erythematosus almost exclusively affects young women before the age of 45. Treatments with corticosteroids and hydroxychloroquine. Prognosis varies, but many patient symptoms are managed effectively. Rheumatoid arthritis is another common cause of autoimmune disease caused fever. It is characterized by symmetrical joint pain, swelling and stiffness, especially in hands, wrists and feet. Morning stiffness that lasts more than 30 minutes and fatigue. Rheumatoid arthritis is also more common among women after 30. Positive rheumatoid factor and anti antibodies are elevated also inflammatory markers like KRP and SR. Treatment is disease modifying anti-rheumatic drugs like methotrexate, biologic agents and physical therapy. The third cause of low-grade fever is thyroid problems. Usually it happens because of increased thyroid function called hyperthyroidism due to Graves' disease. Due to autoimmune antibodies, thyroid hormone production is increased by this antibody stimulation. Its symptoms are persistent low-grade fever, unexplained weight loss, despite increased appetite, tremors, anxiety and palpitations, thyroid problems are much more common among young women before 40. Thyroid hormones are elevated while thyroid stimulating hormone is decreased. Also, thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins are elevated, which indicates Graves' disease. Treatment is with antithyroid medications like methimazole or propylthiorachyl or radioactive iodine therapy, in some cases surgery. Prognosis is generally good. 
<clears throat> but untreated hyperthyroidism can lead to serious complications like atrial fibrillation and osteoporosis. Another cause is medications. Some medications can trigger an immune-mediated hypersensitivity reaction or alter thermoregulation, such as antibiotics, especially sulfonamides and anticonvulsants. In this case, fever is presented without other symptoms. Treatment is immediate cessation of the offending drug. Fever usually resolves within three days. Psychogenic fever is also a possible cause. Prolonged psychological stress or anxiety can lead to dysregulation of body temperature control. In this case, low-grade fever is presented, but no inflammatory markers elevated. Psychogenic fever is more common among young females and associated with stressful life or anxiety. Stress management is important treatment, sometimes anxiolytic medications. The sixth most common cause is early stage malignancy especially Hodgkin lymphoma, which is malignant transformation of lymphocytes and they release inflammatory cytokines, causing low-grade fever with painless lymphadenopathy, night sweats and unexplained weight loss. These combinations called B symptoms, also itching without rash. Gold standard of diagnosis is lymph node biopsy and Reed Sternberg cells. If treated promptly, early stages, cure rate is high. Hodgkin lymphoma has bimodal distribution of age. That means occurs in young age before 35 or after 55. Slightly common in males. Another possible cause is chronic fatigue syndrome, sometimes associated with infections like long COVID. It is characterized by persistent low-grade fever after initial COVID-19 infection. Exact mechanism is not known, but it can be immune dysfunction due to viruses, severe fatigue, brain fog and exercise intolerance are common. Person can remember last experienced COVID-19 infection. From long COVID-19, many patients gradually recover, but some may experience prolonged symptoms requiring ongoing care.